No Film School's NAB 2022 coverage is brought to you by Blackmagic Design and Creative Solutions, which consists of small HD, Teradeck, and wooden camera, and Atomos. Um, so we're here with Mark at the Sony booth. We're here to talk about mirrorless cameras and lenses. Can you just give us a kind of top level view of what Sony offers for independent filmmakers? Sure. Um, obviously, camera development recently in the industry has uh, added more and more uh, filmmaking and video functionality to cameras. The use of 4K, the use of high frame rate 4K, even the appearance of 8K. And uh, at NAB here, we're demonstrating uh, three of our most recently introduced cameras. Uh, obviously, A7S III from 2020, Alpha One from uh, the summer of 2020, and then the most recently introduced model, the A7 IV, uh, in the fall of last year. And all of these cameras um, have a provide a blend of hybrid application for both photographers and uh, videographers. But the uh, the nature of the blend varies from model to model. The most video specific being, of course, the Alpha 7S Mark III. Uh, the Alpha One being a great solution for not only photographers, but also videographers. Its ability to shoot very high frame rate still, as well as 8K video. And then the most recent model, the A7 Mark IV, has been very, very well received because it provides that kind of hybrid balance between still photography and videography at a very affordable price. I mean, a lot of us kind of get in a situation where we're doing both the BTS and rolling footage, and say, in a documentary application. So those types of cameras are exactly what we're looking for. But you know, over the years, Sony started with a couple lenses, and now, right. And the interesting thing is, the cameras have developed into hybrid devices, shooting still and video, um, uh, very broadly and and very aggressively. But one of the things that we find is fascinating is that lens design for mirrorless cameras has not really followed the uh, the design direction of the cameras because most of the lenses, even the ones that have been introduced recently by most manufacturers, are really based around still photography, not videography. So it's very rare that you see lenses with servo zoom, very rare that you see lenses with minimized uh, breathing and ramping. Okay, But one of the things that we have done since, well, even eight years ago, was to start making e-mount lenses that were very well suited for filmmaking. So we introduced our first servo lenses uh, back in 2014. Uh, we introduced our first lenses that um, were purpose built uh, to minimize uh, focus breathing and ramping and axial shift. Um, that long ago. And we are uh, extending that now, and we're introducing, well, we just introduced uh, in March a new lens, the 16 to 35 G, with uh, servo zoom capability, minimized ramping and breathing, and an incredibly compact, lightweight size. And uh, it's been very, very well received, and it really represents what we believe is an important direction uh, for lens design to facilitate and help um, uh, content creators who are shooting not just stills, but also more and more video. Uh, our e-mount lens lineup is now well over 60 models. Wow. Um, certainly the, the widest available uh, for mirrorless cameras. And I think everybody recognizes now that the design of lenses for SLRs and the design of lenses for mirrorless cameras is very, very different because the lenses have to be able to support the capability of the cameras. High frame rate shooting, high still continuous shooting, um, very, very fast autofocus that's precise um, and quick and silent. It's a very, very important part of mirrorless camera requirements of their lenses. And we've been uh, really building on that since 2010 when we introduced E-mount. I mean, one of the interesting things about the E-mount is how shallow the flange distance is. It facilitates the lenses being much lighter weight, which uh, translates perfectly to people like us, independent filmmakers who are shooting in a variety of situations, whether it's a documentary type of application or all the way up to narrative, where you just want to plop it on a tripod and get your focus. It can still do that, but um, being able to have a lighter weight lens that you can go out and do lots of things with. What do you see like, oh. Well, what I'll show you here is our new 1635G. So um, 
this is a case where optical design intention to be optimized for filmmaking as well as the kind of mechatronics that we put in our lenses the actuators the focus motors things like that have all come together to realize a lens of that's well beyond the limits of compactness and weight of anything in its class it uh, it here ah. So, this is a lens that uh, has servo zoom, okay? Mm -hmm. It's a constant aperture lens. Mm -hmm. It has six of our XD linear motors built into the lens, okay? And yet, it's smaller it's, and lighter than any other um, ultra-wide full-frame zoom in the world. It's, it's uh, you, you guys can't see this on camera because it is, this isn't a, a, weight, a medium of weight, but it is extremely light. It's feather light. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's incredibly small and compact. And this is, again, the result of really putting our design effort into creating a lens that's just right for a lot of content creators that are shooting a lot of video. Very wide field of view, um, very sharp across the frame, very low chromatic aberration. You can shoot you know, sun stars and directly into the light with, uh, mm -hmm. um, with impunity. Um, uh, compact, lightweight, usable f4 constant aperture, clickable, declickable iris ring, so you can do depth of field pulls oh, with cameras like an FX6 or an FX9, mm -hmm. and uh, silent, mm -hmm. accurate. Even the power zoom can be controlled from the lens, oh, if you like, nice. mm -hmm. or you can control it from the camera. And many of our, well, most of our recently introduced cameras can have eight programmable yeah. zoom speeds from very, very slow, say a focus pull of, uh, a zoom pull of maybe 30 second duration up to something as short as a second, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and you can even control it if you put the camera on a gimbal or a slider, you can control it by remote. So a remote control over Bluetooth or even your smartphone over Bluetooth can control the lens zoom um, without ever touching the camera. And that's what you get when you have like a, an integrated company that's been around for literally hundreds of years and has technology. My first stereo was a Sony. My first <laughs> alarm clock was a Sony. Uh, my first cinema camera was a Sony. So uh, it, it, when you do all that, then you get stuff like this that's, that's magical in the hand, uh, looks fantastic, I'm sure. Thank you so much, Mark. Thanks very much. Okay.